Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. And congratulations on officially being done with school. We ended with this uh, crazy school year. And it's officially summer time to have fun. So this week, we're going to finish up our series called Unstuck. And if we remember, our memory verse for this entire month was Galatians 6, 9, which says, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't give up. So the whole month we've been talking about determination and not giving up and pushing forward and finishing what we started. And we've been on this amazing journey. Um, week one, we started with the Great Commission, uh, Matthew 28, 16, 20, where Jesus charged his disciples with going out into the world uh, and making disciples of all nations and baptizing them in his name um, and forgiving sins. Uh, and what a great re uh, reminder um, that that's all of our jobs, right? And then in week two, we got into the, to the Acts of the Apostles and we talked about Pentecost and this great gathering of different people from all over different regions and the apostles preaching to them in different tongues and 3,000 believers um, became that day. Um, just another reminder of, of determination and, and pressing forward and, and trusting in the Lord. And then in week three, we talked about Peter and John and where Peter healed the lame person and said, get up and walk. And then they were brought before the Sanhedrin and questioned and told to stop preaching and, and they refused and were finally freed and went back to the other disciples and told them the story that just encouraged the other disciples to keep going. And then in week four, we talked about Stephen, uh, another great account in the book of Acts where Stephen was chosen to help the disciples um, feed the poor and he, and he was led by the Spirit and he did great miracles and he, again, he was questioned by the religious leaders and told to uh, stop doing what he was doing, um, but refused and his, his face lit up like, like sunshine and um, just a wonderful account of God's grace and, and provision for us, uh, even when we don't, don't kind of know what's going on. In all these accounts, we see all this determination from the disciples to, to keep doing what Jesus told them to do. In much the same way, we have to keep doing what God's telling us to do. So today, week five of this series, we're going to listen to a video, watch a video about Philip, the man from Ethiopia. So let's go to the video, and then we'll come back and we'll discuss in a few minutes. Enjoy the video, guys. Oh! Uh, I can't. Ow! One, two, three. Hey, John. Go! Oh! Oh! What's going on? off my fingers. Oh, you, you have to have fingers in both ends. Oh, well, I don't have any more fingers. I know someone who does. <sighs> I don't think this is how it works. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 do that. Mm. Ah. Ah. I'm John, and welcome to the So and So Show. Everyone's favorite show that takes you on a tour de force of laughs, <laughs> knowledge, and thought provoking questions yes. about life and God. Yes, siree. But before we get to any of that, I have got to get something to eat. I am famished. Did you not eat before the show? No. Why not? Well, I, I couldn't decide what I was hungry for. You got any ideas? Uh, I don't know. Sushi rolls? No, no. Oh, no, never say that. Oh, why? 
Why is it, is it a raw fish? Sushi roll? No, that's not the raw fish. It's just what is it wrapped in? Oh, it's, I think it's like a seaweed. No, 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 no! I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Okay, fine. You, uh, I think so, there's some egg salad back there in the fridge. What is salad? What Wait. is salad? About egg salad. You ask for a salad, and they come back with a giant bowl of egg mush. What's even in it? Well, it's all things that you like. There's egg. No! There's mayo. No! What? No! No, no, no! I don't want to know. Next. All right, fine. Uh, you want some cotton candy? <gasps> Why, Brandon? Why? It's not actual cotton. You wouldn't eat your shirt, right? You wouldn't eat your shirt. Mm -hmm. Mm, that's so delicious, so good. I love cotton, tastes like candy, said no one ever. Okay, yeah, but real cotton candy is delicious. I refuse to eat anything I don't understand. Okay, yeah, but every time I try to explain something to you, you say, I don't wanna know. That don't sound like that. Yeah, look, how do you expect to understand if you won't listen to the answers to your questions? Fine, fine. You can try to teach me about cotton candy, <laughs> but I'm not making any promises. Fair enough. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Hey, welcome to the show. Come on in, have yeah. a seat. Whoa, sorry. Here you go. Thanks for having me, John. You are welcome. This is, hey, hey, how did you know my name was John? I've watched the show before. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I really like y'all's old stuff. Yeah, me too. So, uh, who are you and what do you know? Oh. My name is Sugar tilt -a whirl and I sell cotton candy with the Thomason Traveling Carnival. Oh, wow, so you're like a cotton candy expert. <laughs> sure. Why not? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and your actual name is, is Sugar? Who would make something like that up? I, uh, I... Can you tell us how cotton candy is made? I sure can. All right. How is cotton candy made? With a cotton candy maker. Fascinating. And uh, if you had a I've got one outside. Want me to bring it in? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> Do you? He means yes. Well, then why didn't he just say yes? Uh, oh, he was just, I, I, I don't know. Okay. Hey, you with the hat, can you give me a hand? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure I can, and my name is John. I know, I watched the show, remember? Right, yeah. You wearing a hat? Yeah? Can you give me a hand? Sure. Several minutes later. All right, so how does this work? I don't know. You don't. No, but I thought you I thought you sold cotton candy at the Thomason Traveling Carnival. How does that work? What, my microphone? Yeah. I have no idea how it works, actually. I know you're not supposed to do that. Hey, uh, how do you make the cotton candy? Oh, well, you pour the candy sugar into the head of the machine. It's basically just granulated sugar with food flavoring and coloring. This here is silly nilly. The machine heats it up to its melting point, which is about 190 degrees centigrade, or 395 degrees Fahrenheit. This here is spinning at 500 RPMs. And with that level of centrifugal force, the liquefied sugar is expelled through small holes, and it creates a fibrous material. And then you just roll it onto a paper cone. So that's how it works. I have no idea how it 
works. I thought we talked about that. Stop. Okay. Oh, well, that, that, that looks really good. <clears throat> yeah, it is. Did you, did you bring any? Any for you? No, I only brought one paper cone. Oh. But you can candy just about anything. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm. That is good. Mm. Yeah, thanks, sugar. Yeah. Are you talking to me or the cotton candy? You. You're welcome. Mm. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have. We'll see you later, sugar. I mean, probably not. We're gonna be in Skokie this time tomorrow. It's a traveling carnival, not a stay in one place carnival. Those are basically just really sad amusement parks. Well, safe travels. Thanks for coming on the show. Okay. Do we have a key? <sighs> no. Oh, it tastes way better than the shirt. Ah, it's Bible story time with Kellen! Hey, Kellen! How's it going, fellas? Oh, just having a little tasty treat. Nice. You got a story for us today? I do, um, but I can only find one so-and-so show player to help me tell it. Do you guys want to give me a hand? Yes, we do! Great. Today we're going to be using an oldie but a goodie, a flannel graph. This is how I learned Bible stories when I was a kid. Of course, our flannel graph, it's a little different. So, this guy right here is Philip. Philip was one of the earlier followers of Jesus. He sometimes called Philip the evangelist because he traveled all over telling people the good news of Jesus. So Philip was walking around one day when an angel spoke to him. And I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I'm walking. <laughs> Philip, huh, whoa, oh, what's up angel? Go south to the desert road. Which one? Oh, you know the one that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Oh, that one. Thanks, Angel. No problem. Bye. And I'm walking, and I'm walking. So Philip went where the angel commanded. And on the way, he met an official who worked for the queen of Ethiopia, traveling back from Jerusalem. And I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I'm walking. Then Philip heard the Holy Spirit speaking to him. Huh. What's that? You want me to walk over to that chariot? Okay. And I'm walking to the, I'm here. He was led like a sheep to be killed. Just as lambs are silent while their wool is being cut off, he did not open his mouth. What does that mean? Hello! Do you understand what you're reading? How can I? It's talking about sheep and wool. I need someone to explain it to me. Can you? I think I can help you. All right. Well, come over here and sit beside me on my chariot. Beside you? Okay. A great ah! leap! Don't forget your glasses. Ah! Wait, watch my horse. Whoa, horsies! Ah! Ah! No reason, I'm just gonna squat down a little. All right. To... I'm almost there! Yeah. I'm almost great. there! I can. There you go. Just push you around. There you go. Ah! That is amazing. Ah! Great ah! job. Easy peasy. The Ethiopian official was reading from what we call the book of Isaiah. Many years before, God had shown Isaiah a vision of the future, and he had written it down for all of God's people to read. 
Some of what he wrote was kind of hard to understand. That's why the official asked for help. Well, here we are on the back of this chariot. It's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Get it, Bessie. <laughs> well, do you have any questions for me? Is Isaiah the prophet talking about himself or someone else? Is he the sheep led to be killed? Well, actually, Isaiah is talking about someone else who will come much later. Someone who will die as a sacrifice for all of our sins. Tell me, have you heard of the man Jesus? No. Oh, well, let me tell you all about him. Philip told the Ethiopian the good news, that God had planned for hundreds of years to send Jesus to pay for the sins of the world and that anyone who believes in him can be saved. So when they came to a body of water, Whoa, look, here's some water. What can stop me from being baptized? Nothing, let's go to the water. <laughs> Horses away! So Philip baptized the man right then and there. All right, are you ready for this? Yes, let's do it. Okay, here we go. <gasps> and after they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. Whoa! Where is the spirit taking me? Whoa! Whoa! Impressive. Backstruck. <laughs> Backstruck. The end. Guys, thanks for your help. That was fun. Yes, it was. You know what? I loved how the official wasn't afraid to ask when he didn't understand something. I know. We shouldn't let things we don't understand keep us from doing what needs to be done. So it's good to ask questions. Yeah, and it's good to make yourself available to answer questions others might have, like, like Philip did. Truth. Great story, Kellen. Thanks for letting us play. Later. Later. You know, I have questions sometimes about life and about God. Me too. And I don't know that all of those questions will be answered, but I think it's important to ask. I have a question right now. Oh, well then reveal the question. All right, what questions do you have? I have so many. Like, what's the difference between indigo and midnight blue? Why do they call it a litter of kittens and kitty litter and they're two completely different things? Uh, maybe you have some questions. Why is abbreviation such a long questions word? Questions about life or, or God or really anything. What weighs more, the Chrysler Building or the Great Pyramid of Cheops? Talk about it together. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? We'll see you next time on... And what is a woodchuck? The so-and-so show. And why does it get bothered that it has a nickname? Doesn't it want to be called Charles? What are you gonna candy first, John? First thing is a shoe. Wait, is that mine? Yes. Scissors. That ah. doesn't work very well. It just didn't cut it. Order up. John's Keytar! What? No, 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 no! Oh, no! Welcome back. It's a pretty cool video. And there were some things in there that I just want to point out and, and talk about and dig into just for a moment. So we see this, this scene set up where, where Philip is is in the desert and and there's this guy in a chariot right and and let's i want to read this it says the holy spirit said to philip go over and walk along beside the carriage and what was philip's response to this the holy spirit prompting him to go over to this carriage and it says so philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet isaiah so Philip's response when the Holy Spirit prompted him to say, go over to that carriage, was not to walk slowly, was not to think about it and say, I wonder why I want to, he wants me to walk over to that carriage. Philip responded immediately and ran to the carriage. 
And I think that's just a beautiful example of how we should respond to God in our life. When we hear the prompting of the Holy Spirit, which is what Jesus, um, the Son, the Father, sent to us to help do the missions that we're supposed to do, it's an immediate response and we run in that direction. And let's go to another, another interesting thing. So this traveler says, as they rode along, they came to some water. He said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? And he ordered the carriage to stop and they went down to the water and Philip baptized them. So there's two things I want to point out here. Again, an immediate response by this stranger after hearing the good news to want to be baptized. Why can't I be baptized? Let's do it right now. I wanted to respond. He wanted to respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And the second thing is, they're riding on a desert road in this carriage. And I think it's miraculous that there's just a body of water in the middle of the desert, ready for this baptism to take place. This isn't a coincidence. This is a miracle. There's a body of water that was placed there by the Lord. And Philip was placed there by the Lord. And so was this traveler. This was all made so that a, so this baptism could happen. Philip could have the opportunity to run to that chariot, explain the good news. The traveler could have an opportunity to respond to that good news and be baptized and become an ambassador for Christ. Um, and then the last thing I want to point out is when he came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The traveler never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. So once Philip's job was done, the Lord said, let's move on. I have more work for you. And immediately snatched him away. Again, immediately snatched him away. And he was on. He found himself somewhere north. And he was ready to do more, more work for the Lord. So the, the whole month, the bottom line has been keep going. Um, determination. Finish what you start. Uh, and that's what I want you guys to continue doing during the summer. Um, just because it's summer it doesn't mean you don't have um, tasks you want to achieve, um, things you want to do. So just have that determination to keep going. Um, decide it's worth finish. It's decide it's worth it to finish what you've started. Um, and the bottom line of this story is keep going when you have questions. Just like the traveler, we're going to have questions. Um, and it's not necessarily a time to just stop because we're confused or we don't know what's going on. It's time to uh, pray and bring those to the Lord and ask him for help and clarity. And he will show us the right things to do. So <clears throat> in closing, um, it's been a great month talking about getting unstuck and, and having determination. And that's what I'm, my prayer is for you guys today is have determination, take those questions to God, and I promise you he will answer them. So let's close in a word of prayer. God, we are so thankful that you welcome our questions, that no question is too big or too small for you, Lord. I pray and, and thank you that you love to have conversations with us Um as conversations when we, when we are discouraged because we don't understand the full picture that you see in heaven. Um, help us remember this week that because you are a good, good God and you've sent your Holy Spirit to guide us that we can keep going even when we have questions. And uh, we bring all these questions to you, Lord, because you can answer them and show us which path and which road to travel. Um, we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Well, have a good, good rest of the week. Enjoy the first week of summer. Um, get outside, enjoy the wonderful weather, and we'll catch up next week. See you guys. Bye.